Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. And welcome Good evening. to this Wednesday night um, Bible session. Glad to meet see many of you um, and hear from many of you. Um, um, we welcome um, Reverend Walter Barrett tonight as a um, Bible study pastor leader, and he can start with a prayer. And after the prayer, he can continue with his with the study. Thank you. All right. All right. Good afternoon to everyone that's on the um, Zoom call tonight. Pray that everybody had a blessed day on today. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, to learn together, right? I consider this as learning together. Um, so we do appreciate the opportunity that we have on tonight. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer, if you don't mind. Our Father and our God, Lord, we come on tonight. Dear Lord, we come to learn more about you, Father God, that you will strengthen us in our Bible study. Lord, we ask even right now that you bless the members that's on this Zoom call tonight, bless the ones that will be joining later on. And Father God, for those that did not join tonight, Lord, whatever they may be, we ask for a special prayer over their lives, their house, their, their families, God, whatever uh, may be going on right now. We just pray that you do what you do uh, best, Father God, is meet somebody at the point of their knees and open the door for somebody tonight. Lord, we love you. We glorify you. It's in the name of Jesus. We do pray. We say amen. 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 Again, let me just say uh, good afternoon once more again. Um, on Sunday, uh, I actually uh, preach from Acts chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. Um, but I had, after I left church Sunday, um, had my moments of, of meditation, asked God to lead me somewhere where I, uh, he would think that the people would get a word with a good Bible study on tonight. And so he led me to Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to get that. Old Testament, Nehemiah chapter four. I don't know who this Bible study for. It may just be for me tonight, but it, it, was, it was something that uh, touched my heart when I read it. Nehemiah chapter four. Hey, I'm old school. I like to have people to engage with me. I, I don't want to be the only one talking. Um, so I'll pause in between some of the things that I will say and, um, and we'll learn together. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 4, I'm starting at verse 1. Uh, I'm going to read the first four verses, and then I'm going to skip over to verses 14 and 15. 1 through 4, and then I'm going to skip over to verses 14 and 15. I do ask that you read this at your leisure time. It's a, it's a good lesson to learn from. Verse 1 says, uh, Sam Ballot was very angry when he, when he learned that we were rebuilding the walls. He flew into a rage and mocked the Jews, saying that, saying in front of his friends and the Sumerians, army officers, what does this bunch of poor, feeble Jews think they are doing? Do they think they can build a wall in a single day by just offering a few sacrifices? Do they actually think that they can make something of stone from the rubbish heap and shard ones that ones at that verse number three says tobiah the ammonite who was standing beside him re remarked or replied and said that stone wall would collapse if even a fox walked along on top of it then i prayed hear us O god for we are being mocked May their scuffing fall back on their own heads and may they, may they themselves become captives in a foreign land. Do not ignore their guilt. Do not blot out their sins for they have provoked you to anger here in front of the builders. We'll go to verse 14. Verse 14 says, then as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them, do not be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord 
who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Verse 15 says, when our enemies heard that we knew of their plans and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to the work on the wall. I want to use just for our topic on tonight, I want to use for a topic, stay focused. Stay focused. I want to use for a subtitle on tonight. After you write stay focused down, I want to use rebuilding in spite of opposition. Rebuilding in spite of opposition. Many of us have experienced what I call the Murphy Law. If you know anything about the Murphy Law, it simply goes like this. Anything can go wrong at any time. If you would be honest tonight, a lot of us already have dealt with the Murphy Law before because, you know, things, one thing can go wrong and then another thing can happen, can go wrong just as well. In other words, what I'm saying tonight, um, one thing can break down on you before you even finish paying for it. What I'm saying tonight, you can be doing something and somebody may not even like the finished product. We have all recognized or experienced the Murphy Law before in our life. And this is what is going on with Nehemiah and the children of Israel. Um, their circumstances, they found themselves in the circumstances in chapter 4 where now they was facing severe violence from the opposition. And I don't know about you, but it seems like when you're working for the Lord, and there are times when you are doing God's work, there's always some opposition that comes to task. It seems like the more you try to love people, the more you try to help people, the more you try to do for people, it seems like the opposition, the enemy always sticks it ugly heads out in those situations. But I come out to tell somebody tonight, regardless of what the opposition say, or regardless of what the opposition do, if God has given you a plan and a purpose, you have to stay focused. Can I say that one more time? Regardless of what the opposition may be, if God has given you a plan and a purpose, you and I have to stay focused to the task at hand. Because if you begin to worry about what the enemy says and the adversary does, you will put your focus on what they are thinking rather than what God has planned for you. Now, let me just be honest with you on tonight. All of us are subject, no matter how long we've been churching, no matter how long we've been going to Bible study, Sunday school, there's always something that has the potential to rock us, to shake us, to make us fall off track. And that's why the point tonight is, is that you have to stay focused. When I was thinking about this chapter, chapter four, you, here it is, Nehemiah, um, they was held in captivity, Israel was held in captivity for 70 years because they had sinned against God. Make this point, somebody, for those of you who are taking notes, anytime you step out of the realm of God, you got to be willing to accept the, consequen the consequences that may come your way. Now, somebody may be saying tonight, well, I know a lot of people ain't even following God and and they, and they seem like they're doing good. Yes, God does bless the just as well as the unjust. But there are some times that you can, it may look like they're doing good on earth. But I just believe in every knee shall bow. And every tongue must confess. I just believe that. So here it is. The children of Israel, Israel was in captivity. They're in captivity. If you read the previous chapters, you'll see where the walls have been torn down. Rubbish is all over the place. But Nehemiah have made up his mind that God has given him a task. And that no matter what it looks like, 
He's not going to allow anybody or anything keep him from doing what God has told him to do. Can I just park right here real quick? COVID-19 came 2020, whatever it may be, and it's been here and it's still here. And so many times we will use that as an excuse from doing the will of God. Can I just share this with you tonight? If God is in it, everything is going to be all right. God, maybe I might be the only one shouting on this. But if God is in it, everything is going to be all right. This is not the first time that you and I have been in a chaotic situation. This is not the first time you and I have faced this crisis in our life. And if the same God was there back then, he's the same God that's here today. That's why you and I have to learn how to stay focused on the task at hand because there will always be opposition that will come our way because the enemy sees what God is doing in your life. I'm going to mess you up right here. Please don't get mad at me. I'm just telling the truth on this Wednesday night. There are some times that church people is standing in the way so they are trying to keep you from growing in Christ. God, don't get mad at me tonight. I'm just being honest and truthful on tonight. People have a task to try to keep you stagnant. And sometimes it's not always on the outside. My God, sometimes it's inside the church. And that's why we can't allow whomever it may be to mess with our mind. That's why we can't allow, you got to be able to keep your eyes on everything and everybody. Because sometimes, you know the song, we ain't always been Christian all our life, but you heard the song, Backstabbers. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like, like I'm crazy. We have some backstabbers. But we got to stay focused. Nehemiah was on a mission. And his mission was to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. That's why I thought about Jerusalem tonight. Is that Jerusalem, even at this time, your church is in a rebuilding stage. That's why I believe God spoke this to me tonight about this. You are in a rebuilding stage. When you're in a rebuilding stage, I'm not necessarily saying that you're rebuilding the church. But we have to think of new ideas post-COVID. We have to think of new ways to do things post-COVID. And so that calls you to be in a rebuilding stage. You are on a mission for God. It's a, it's a starting over process. And if you're starting over, watch this. That means you have a new opportunity. God, Ooh. sometimes, let me just use this for example, and then I'm, then I'm gonna pause and get somebody an opportunity to come in. Sometimes we hold on to stuff that we should let go. All right, you didn't get that, that went over your head. Let me say it like this. Sometimes we hold on to people that we should let go. God is saying to us tonight that I'm giving you a new opportunity to rebuild the wall. I'm not physically saying a wall, but your wall could be anything. A new attitude. How to love one another. How to respect one another. How to treat one another. We are in a new process at Jerusalem. I'm going to stop right here. I want to give somebody an opportunity to come in. Oh, God, I, I love this. I love this. Hey, Amen. Do anybody have anything to say at this moment? I, um, sometimes we get hung up on traditions as well, old traditions. I see sometimes God is trying to do new things, and we won't allow him to come into our heart for new things. 
you know, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, they, the younger generation, their um, lives are much different than the older and sometimes the middle age generation. Sometimes it takes a minute for us to stop and pay attention to what they're saying and what they're doing. Because like I said, it could be God um, trying to tell us something. He's trying something new. Even though I know that tradition should be of hell as well. But uh, sometimes just sit back and look and see what, uh, see what he's doing. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Man, thank you for your comment. And I just want to respond to that before somebody else jump in. It's okay for us to be able to change our mindset, right? A lot of times we're afraid to change the mindset and to try something new. You know, the thing is, is if we be totally honest, church has even changed since COVID. It's not the same as it used to be. So, so um, traditions, we want to respect those, but there's nothing wrong with trying something new. Before I close, you're going to see what, what I'm saying when I said trying something new. Sometimes you have to tear down the old to build something new. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to see where I'm coming at the end. But you own to something. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Watch this. Nehemiah and the people of Israel was held for captivity for 70 years. God promised them that he would take them back to the promised land. He promised. One thing I want you to know, if God makes you a promise, you can hold on to that promise. Now watch this. This is something that happens in our churches today. Nehemiah had a new plan to build a wall, him and the people of Israel. But the Bible says that they was fatigued, they was frustrated, they was fearful. Let me say it again. They was fearful, they was fatigued, and they was frustrated. Sometimes doing the work for the Lord, uh, it will make you feel fatigued, frustrated, and fearful. But watch this. But guess what? They never lost focus on the task at hand. You and I get fearful, frustrated, and fatigued at times, but don't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus. Let me see it coming. I'm sorry, somebody left a comment. I was trying to read that. Yes, uh, I'm actually coming from Nehemiah chapter four, uh, verses one through four, and also verses 14 and 15. Nehemiah chapter four, amen. If you get the opportunity to read that whole entire chapter, please. Again, they was, they was fearful, they was frustrated, um, but they never lost focus. So Nehemiah says this, he says, although I've been real approach, reapproached by the enemy, the adversary, I can't give up. And when you're doing the work for the Lord, you're going to be reproached, but you can't give up. And even, see, this is what I want you to realize. When the enemy recognizes the gift that God has given you, the enemy becomes angry. Satan and he becomes so angry because he don't want Christians uh, to have a spiritual, strong, uh, effective witness for God. And what does he what does he try to do? Satan tries to stop you from glorifying God. And what will Satan do when he try to stop? He will use anything and anybody to try to stop the progress of the Lord. 
Notice the first thing I told you, they was held in captivity for 70 years. God made them a promise. He's now delivering on that promise. Nehemiah made up in his mind, regardless who get mad, regardless who get angry, I'm not going to stop doing the will of the Lord. I pause right there to tell somebody this. You're wondering why so many people disagree with you, so many people that has opposition against you, and you're working hard as you can for the Lord. It's because people see what God has embedded in you. They ain't so much mad at you. They see what God has embedded in you. And what do they do when they see that? They become jealous and angry. That's what these people became. Sambala and Tobia became jealous and angry. They became the adversary um, because they knew that there was something about Nehemiah that was special, that God was able to use this person to build a wall. The enemy of Israel, watch this, after reading this text, the enemy of Israel opposed the work of God. That just suggests to me on tonight, reading verses one through four, is that when you're doing the will of God, there's going to be somebody that's going to oppose you. But watch this. Opposition is not only evidence that God is blessing you, but opposition is evidence that God is going to use it as an opportunity to grow you. God. Can I say that one more time? Opposition is not only evidence that God is blessing you, but opposition is evidence that God is going to use it as an opportunity for you to grow. So that suggests to me is don't be afraid of the opposition. Stay in the game. Stay in the game. In other words, God will use the very thing that you are going through to take you where he needs you to be. Has anybody on this call, you ever been in a storm and you wonder why me, Lord, why am I going through it? But when you reach that destination, you understood the reason why God was taking you through it. I don't know what the storm may be. It could be a loss of a job, but he provided a better job. It could be a sickness that you, you, he used that sickness for you to be able to have that testimony to tell somebody else. Is that keep trusting God. I don't know what it may be tonight, but God has a way of using you. Using what you're going through to get you to where he needs you to be. And the difficulties that Nehemiah was coming up against, the work that he was getting ready to do, it brought the best out of Nehemiah. And tonight, I, I, sometimes you're at your best moment when you're going through a battle. I'll pause right there. Anybody have anything to say? And look, verse, verses, when you read verses 11 and 12, the, the, it says the enemy was angry. They was over there talking. They was plotting. They was planning. And that's what the enemy does, right? He's plotting and planning. Don't you ever think the enemy is going to get angry at you and won't assault you? God, let me say that again. Don't ever think the enemy won't get angry at you and do not assault you. That's what the enemy does. He gets angry and he tries to assault. He tries to downplay. He tries to tell you that you can't do it. He tries to tell you that you won't be able to do it. But Nehemiah stood strong in this chapter four. He says, regardless, and I'm paraphrasing, he says, regardless how you think of me, regardless how you mock me, because if you read this, 
verses um, 6 through 12, it says that they mocked them, they made fun of them. He says, regardless of how you think that I even may be less than, is that I'm going to remain focused on the task at hand. In other words, what he was trying to tell us tonight is that I'm going to get this wall built. This wall will be built. And you have to make up in your mind that when you are doing something for the Lord, that if you have made up in your mind that God, if you lead and guide me, that this is going to work out. Know for yourself that this will work out. And watch this in verse 11 and 12. If you read it, the enemy made some attempts. Even though Nehemiah said, I'm going to rebuild, the enemy used some, some, some words to try to threaten him. He used some discouragements against him. He was using everything that he had to throw at him. And sometimes in the midst of opposition, things will come up against you, but it won't stick. They would throw everything at you. But if God be for me, he more than the whole world against me. It will not stick. Anybody have anything to say? Come on, don't make me think I'm the only one on here tonight. All right. So listen, they start building the wall and the whole time they was building this wall, they had the day club talking. And sometimes when the day club start talking, they want to find fault in everything that you do. In verse four or five, um, it says, if a fox climb on top of it, it will collapse. The enemy was already plotting and planning that, hey, this wall won't withstand anything. And, and you got to realize this, though. So, yes, people are planning and plotting. The enemy is planning and plotting. But the thing is, is what they don't understand is the God that you serve. The enemy has a mission also, as well as you should have a mission. But the difference between you and the enemy is, is the God that you serve. The enemy plan is to take you out. But the difference between you and the enemy is that you got a God on your side. Amen, somebody. Amen. And when you go ahead, I'm sorry. I just said amen. <laughs> amen, somebody. Thank you, sir. So we have to prepare. This lesson teaches us tonight that we have to prepare. You have to be ready and prepared because opposition is coming your way. But are you ready and prepared? So, so brother teacher. Yes, sir. Um, I, I'm struggling just a little bit because okay. I, I don't want a person to think that just because somebody comes against them or oppose them, it automatically make them right. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So let me just rephrase. I'm, hopefully I say the way you just said it. You don't want people to think that just because somebody come against them, uh, don't want to make them right. I think that's what you said. Is that correct? I, um, sometimes we come against people because they are wrong. Okay. So, so that's not what I'm saying. So I'm glad. Let me just clear this up. What I'm saying is the enemy came against Israel and Nehemiah because they opposed the work of God. So, so what I'm saying is when you are doing the will of God, Opposition has a way of coming your way, your way, my way. 
when you're doing God's will. Am, am I making it clear for you? I'm not saying that um, just because somebody opposed what you do that they are wrong. What I'm saying is when you are doing what God has designed for you to do. Okay, the, the, the pre-qualifier is when you are doing what God has designed for you to do and you know it. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And I, I hope I said that earlier in my notes. I got it right here. Um, the enemy came. Uh, the enemy came against Israel. They opposed Israel. Uh, uh, sorry, the enemy of Israel opposed the work of God. That was my second point. I hope I, if, if you did not hear that, if I did not say it, that's my fault. I do apologize. Tonight's lesson is that Nehemiah and Israel was doing the work and the will of God. Reverend Barrett, this is Deacon Harris. Um, yes, I, I think you, I think you, you're saying it. I think um, one of the things that crossed mind is a lot of times, even when we're dealing with individuals in the church, um, some people mean well. Some people have thoughts that they believe are, you know, the best thoughts in the world. Sometimes we bump heads because one of us may not know or may not be doing exactly what we, what God is really expecting us to do. If you put it that way. Okay. Um, yes, so, sometimes we can believe with all our heart that we're doing the best, you know, we're doing what God wants us to do. Um, one question we could probably ask ourselves is, is this the right time for what I believe God wants me to do? And I think sometimes that causes a lot of tension in the church uh, when, when you got one side that thinks, hey, look, this is what's best for us now. And another side that says, well, I think this is what's best for us now. And, and sometimes how do we come to and understanding that, hey, um, we have to um, look at what God has in store for us. We have to make sure that we're on the same page as a church, but at the same time that we're all looking to do what God has in store for Jerusalem. Absolutely. So I will also just want to add to what you said. I agree with that. I think communication is so important. Um, and, and, and yes, there will be some people... Um, we don't always agree, right? And, and that's true. But we have to learn how to disagree without uh, getting so upset and I'm mad. Is that we got to learn how to disagree in love. Um, we're different, right? We're different people. But, and, you know, we don't think, we don't always think alike. We don't. But if, we put, if we're doing it, we're doing it for the Lord. It's got it's, it's to say, hey, this ain't all about me. This ain't all about you. What are we doing it for? Anybody else? And, and both of those points was great, too. Um, so I want to make sure I'm clear, too, though. So I... Uh, like I said, both of those points was great. Um, so, so I want to make this point too. So, when we're reading this and we look at the uh, destruction that has happened to the walls, all the rubbish, um, they could not rebuild the wall until they removed the rubbish, right? Which suggests is that in order for you to rebuild is that something you have to move out of the way to start over new? Do y'all get me? You're not going to rebuild. Yeah. You're not going to rebuild on rubbish that's broken down. You're not going to rebuild over that. You're going to get. You're going to. You're going to remove that out of the way, so you can have a new beginning. I can't think of the young man that uh, made the first comment. But that's what I was, I was heading to um, rubbish. Rubbish could, could, uh, uh, it could, it could categorize several different things. We can, we can just say, hey, sometimes in order for me to move forward, because that's what Nehemiah was doing, moving forward in the process, is that they had to move the rubbish out of the way. That had to be moved. Now, how do we bring that down to how we apply that to our everyday life? 
in order for us to move rubbish, we have to remove some things that's holding us back from going forward. That's stopping the progress, the process. See, God wants to use us, but we got to be willing to be used. And one of the reasons why Nehemiah was able to build the wall is that he made himself available to be used by God. He made himself available to be used by God. Because if you look at that, this entire chapter four, while the enemy was plotting and planning, the people of Israel and Nehemiah was talking to the Lord. So we have to be in constant communication with the Lord. So we can get the plans from him, what he will have for us to do for our lives. And, and, and you got to think about it, right? So Jerusalem, even Jerusalem Baptist Church that's on the line tonight, is that you have to stay in constant communication with the Lord. And I know your leadership that you have. Um, and I'm sure all of you are praying. God is in your hand. But we do the work. But God will trust in you. And that's what, it's, that's, that's what this is all about. That's what it's all about. And, and I, I, like, I like verse, I like this, I like verse 15. Watch this. It says, when the enemies heard that we knew of their plan and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to the work on the wall. Let's break that up. God has a way, because remember the enemy was plotting and planning. He has a way of derailing the plan of the enemy. So the work can go on that he promised them. Let me say that again. God has a way of derailing the plan of the enemy. So the work will go on that he has already planned. Earlier it says Nehemiah was fearful. They was fatigued. They was frustrated. But look at the end of the chapter. That's why I tell young people, sometimes in life it's not how you start, but it's how you end. At the end of the chapter, it says God switched that thing around. The young people would say he flipped the script. Now the enemy is frustrated. Now the enemy don't understand we had a plan to stop the wall. But we could not stop the wall because it was designed to happen by God. Anybody want to say anything right there? No, no, no comments right there. So the C clause says we all return to our work on the wall. I want to just tell you this, that the work must go on. We got a lot of work to do. Now more than ever before, the work has to go on. It's a must. That we go out telling this dying nation that Jesus still lives. We have to proclaim 
on a daily basis that God is still the head of our lives. He's still the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The work of the wall was going on, which means that they continue to stay focused. They continue to work in the face of opposition. And lastly, that they did not give up. They continue to work in spite of what they said. Simply suggest to us tonight that we have to do the same thing. Yes, you may get tired but stay focused. Sometimes frustrated, but stay focused. The work may not be easy, but stay focused. People may even talk about you, but stay focused. If you can learn how to stay focused in the midst of what's going on around, I truly believe, and I believe this story, that at the end, the wall will be built. In other words, the work will be done. And it's taking people to come together. When we come together, we are much stronger than saying that we can do it on an I, I, I basis. When the team comes together, the team performance is so much better. So I, I close this Bible study as I open it up early. Stay focused. And in opposition, when you're doing the will of God, Opposition may come, but remain focused. Nehemiah chapter 4, you can read that on your leisure time, verses 1 through 15. Um, I took the night, verses 1 through 4, then I went through uh, verses 14 and 15. Um, it's roughly 745. Do anybody have any questions? But teacher, um, um, one of the issues in the church today is burnout. Yes, sir. There was a lot of dedication uh, talked about in Nehemiah's time. Um, do you know of any scripture or passage that might would help us in the church with burnout? I don't have one off the top of my head. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Um, trying to see how can I get that to you because we I did a class on burnout probably about eight months ago and, and and you are so right church members of the church can get burned out too right um I don't know if you are willing to uh you can get my phone number I can get I can get something for you I don't have it on in front of my face right now but I can get something for you is that okay You can you can uh, uh, catch up with me real easy. Uh, any of the brothers who've already got your contact information can can get it to you, and I don't mind you having mine. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I definitely I get that for you though. Thank you. So so um, I thank the brother for saying that. Um, and sometimes that we we have to we have to realize too though, it's okay, it's okay. Um, to recognize burnout, right? Because if you don't recognize burnout, you only harm yourself. Anybody else? And we have to pray real hard that even though we burn out, don't run away. I mean, we, that's that's sometimes we do um, get focused. Other folk get 
we get focused on what God wants us to do. Other people don't want to don't want to go on that road, and that can be real stressful on it, and we we will get um, frustrated, burn out, and run away. And that's the thing, trying to we got to stay prayed up so that we won't turn our back on God on what he wants us to do. Because like you said, some, sometimes we do um, be out there and you feel like you're out there by yourself. You don't express, you know, what God does says, the Lord that came to you. And the only thing you can say, that's what God put on my heart. And it's a, it is a constant fight. And it's just like pulling, pulling rope from one end to the other. And then you run away. Try not so, to let go. So it's my belief, this is my belief, is that um, sometimes, you know, even when we are burned out, we don't want to talk about it, right? We, we're so afraid that we're going to let somebody down if we talk about being burned out. That's the time to talk about it, right? And we got to be able to, uh, I think a great leader, one thing with a great leader is able to delegate work. It's not trying to do everything every time when we have other people that can do it. It take a, it take a collective effort from everybody to actually make the church run, right? Those days, I, this is just me talking, those days of um, especially a pastor saying that he, he or she doing it all by themselves, those days are gone. Um, we, we need everybody to join this fight. So we don't have the burnout like, like we have had. Anybody else? If we have nobody else, uh, Deacon Harris, if you're still on. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, we, you can close us out in prayer. Okay. Reverend Barrett. Okay, sorry. Again, uh, let me just say this uh, real quick. Uh, thank Jerusalem um, for this opportunity. I hope and pray that, um, uh, that you all... Uh, uh, take the lesson from the night, the Bible study from the night. Um, go back and read verses 1 through 15. Mm -hmm. Understand some of the points that we have taken. Um, and remember, it's doing the will of God. When God has given you an assignment, he gave Nehemiah an assignment. Mm -hmm. and then he also gave them a promise too, right? Yes. That I, you will return back to the promised land. Yes. And, and I think that's, that's so important that we, that we recognize that. Yeah. So I'm so I'm so uh, happy that you gave me this opportunity. Uh, we pray that uh, God continue to touch the members of Jerusalem Baptist Church, and that um, one of the one of the things I wanted to uh, stress tonight is all of you. What I've seen on Sunday is that you're a church family that loves a church family that uh, hold one uh, close to your heart. So you have to stay focused. Yes. That's why I wanted you to know tonight. I just want you to stay focused. Even in opposition, when it comes, you stay focused. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, we thank you on tonight. Lord, we thank you uh, for this Wednesday night Bible study. Lord, we realize even on tonight, Father God, that when we're doing your will, we may face some opposition. Yes. But God, let us remain steadfast, unmovable, Lord, always abiding in you when we're doing your will and your your work, Father God. Lord, bless the members that's on this line tonight, Father God. Bless their household. Continue even at this moment to stretch us, God, to make us better. Lord, even though uh, some of us may feel and, and may even seem that we're burned out, but God, even on tonight, we know that, Lord, you can give us our joy back. 
Yeah. You can give us our peace back. Yeah. Lord, we know you as of tonight to comfort us even in uncomfortable situations. Yes. God, we love you on tonight. God, we 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 thank you for being God and being thank God you. all by yourself. Mm. Lord, until thank the next time we meet again, Lord, we just say, bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. We say amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. That was amen. a man. Thank you. Hey, Thank hey, my man that, that uh, asked about that burnout. Um, I'm gonna, I'll just tell you my number right now. It don't make a difference to me if you're still on. Yeah. All yeah. right. Should I put it in the chat? Uh, tell it to me. I'm slower than everybody else. Tell it no. to me. <laughs> you good? You good? 804 683 1720. All right, I got it. Appreciate it, brother. All right, now, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, man. All right, we're back. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.